Hi, everybody. This is A Wee Bit of Alchemy, and I'm Rick Barrett. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, this week, I'd like to talk a little bit about something that I've been writing about lately, which is about Taiji Chuan as a spiritual path. And it's something that is uh, near and dear to my heart, and it's something that actually is uh, uh, going to be a, a big part of the, of the book that I'm writing now. And the uh, I went back to look over the the, uh, the forty chapters, the Young Family Secret Transmissions. That um, uh, that's what, one way it was it was built, but it was basically stuff that that the Young Family had as part of their uh, their inner inner training and. Uh, wasn't shared with uh, with us other folks for up until late in the 20th century, but uh, there's some, some really important stuff there because it, the whole thing of the, the, the 40 chapters is centered around the idea of of Taiji Chuan not just as a martial art but also as a spiritual path. And one of the things that I've been talking to you a lot about right from the start of this is uh, is how we must learn to feel, to actually engage the feeling sense as a way of activating this body-mind-spirit integration. And it, it was kind of cool going back over the, the 40 chapters and seeing that I didn't quite make that up. That, that, that's actually something that's been there for quite a while. And it runs counter to a lot of spiritual traditions which see the body as an impediment. It sees it like a, this nuisance that we just somehow have to, to starve to death or humiliate or mortify in such a way that we can transcend it and, uh, or at least ignore it. And uh, Peggy Tran goes the opposite way. It says, no, no, we want to find this spiritual uh, awakening that comes not by ignoring the body, but by actually engaging it, by, by feeling into it. So what I'd like to do is to spend part of this, this uh, session in actually reading a couple of sections, a couple of passages from that, from that book, and just so you can see what we're doing, because there's a lot of what I've been uh, emphasizing in these talks is to have a context for the actions. It's one thing to say, oh, I'm just going to do my form for 40 years and then everything will be fine. Uh, but if, unless you add this curiosity to the equation, you're not gonna get beyond a very superficial level. You'll get to a, a body level, but that's, that's about it. So you want to, there's a, a definite progression that occurs from first awakening the body mind, and well, let me let me read this because this actually it, it fits right in with what I've been talking about. So um, uh, this is in the uh, the second chapter uh, under the practice of the eight gates and the five steps. Uh, the line said, "We must first understand." the meaning of the words conscious movement. After grasping conscious movement, we can begin to interpret energy. And finally, from interpreting energy, proceed to spiritual illumination. However, at the beginning of practice, we must gain an understanding of conscious movement, which, although it is part of our natural endowment, is very difficult to grasp. So this is from the uh, Douglas Weil translation of the, uh, the, the lost Taiji classics from the late Qing dynasty. And um, there are other translations of it, which give slightly different spirits. I kind of like this one. This is, uh, uh, he was uh, very intimately connected with Cheng Nan Ching and, and uh, uh, a, a scholar who uh, had uh, written quite a bit about about the uh, about this about the subject so uh, the, the, let's unpack that a little bit the 
we have this, so we have a definite progression here. First, you, you grasp conscious movement. And uh, in another translation of this, say, uh, Yang Jing Ming translates that as conscious feeling. And I like both of them. I think both are essential, conscious movement and conscious feeling. So the, the conscious feeling it underlies the conscious movement. And that means that it's not just observing your movements, it's you're coming at it from a, a place of, of knowing that is beyond the intellect. And we'll get into to that in a little bit, but it's, so there is a, there's this quality of awakening the, the senses that uh, very clear is that, that the, although it is part of our natural endowment, it's very difficult to grasp. So there's something there that they're talking about that is beyond just like, oh yeah, you know, I've been feeling my whole life. You know, I, 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 my, I yeah, I'm sure I see, I, I hear things, but there is a, a, a gap between the conscious movement or the conscious feeling and what we get acclimated doing, that is to actually kind of have most of, of the, the, the senses on a pre, at a pre-conscious level. That is, we're not even aware that we're feeling, see, feeling seeing, touching, etc. We are, we're just so into the intellectual or the, 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 the thought process that we are thinking about feeling rather than actually feeling. And so they're emphasizing here that, no, no, this is important. Not only is it important, but it's, it's not real easy. Don't take this for granted. There is something that is, requires some practice doing, and that is to actually feel. And so as you'll know that a lot of my exercises and things I'm teaching, I'm really emphasizing that. Like, no, no, feel your feet, feel your fingers, you know, feel your knee one, et cetera. Getting that so that, that a reminder, every time I say that, just, it's just a reminder to go back and actually contact that. So but there's a very, a, a natural tendency to just kind of put it on autopilot and just kind of zoom through. The, uh, the exercise and sort of memorize it, put it on muscle memory. And so I don't have to think about it and I can, you know, I can read the paper while I'm doing my, uh, my uh, treadmill or something like that. This is different. This is not, a, I want to be present for that. And so we have a different progression here. One is first you got to feel, you got to really get into that. And then you become aware of energy and then you learn to interpret energy. And that's a lot of what we've been doing too in this uh, in these in these sessions is to learn to interpret energy. That's why, like last week, I was talking about okay, we're we're going with with the uh, earth energy and feeling it with bare energy, and really just getting into getting into that the feeling of the energy, interpreting it. That is, not all energy is the same. What is yin energy as opposed to yang energy? Learning to interpret that so that we can actually start to distinguish at a more insubstantial level. So it's that, that we start to identify that aspect of our being that is the insubstantial side, the energetic side. We're starting to feel ourselves as energy beings, not just muscle and bone. And whenever we do that, once we get to, we're able to interpret energy, once we move to that level of insubstantiality, where we're actually able to say, oh, okay, there's more to it than this, this, hunk, of, uh, this hunk of meat here, this ambulant bag of water that is me, it is, there is this whole other thing. And then that is where the, you know, the spiritual illumination comes in. That's when we start to awaken to something even more insubstantial than the energy. We start to get a feel for that. Start to, oh, there's this, that, that comes. It, it's not just something other, it's, it's right there. 
and that's uh, that's the uh, the direction this is this is headed. Tidy dread as a spiritual path, and for these guys, there is no major distinction between Tai Chi as a martial art or as a spiritual path. They're, they're the same. And it's, it's very in keeping with the Taoist idea, you know, because there is, there is, everything is, has its place and being able to, to ward off a, a, an incoming punch is just as important as being able to, to move into that um, transcendent space. They're, they are just different aspects of the same thing. Okay. Any uh, questions or thoughts uh, so far before we move on to this? Rick. You are on, 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 on mute. You're still on mute. You're even muted. <laughs> there we there go. you are. Yeah, I'm very glad you brought this up. I'm, I'm, this has always been wildly important to me because people spend so many years. I mean, when I, when I, when I talk to, to people, uh, how often do you avoid a punch? But how often do you live? In other words, you know, training for 10 years in the martial arts to prepare yourself for less than 30 seconds of your life, even if you ever were in a fight, has never made any sense to me at all. So the fact that I'm able to study with you and learn Kung Fu and Tai Chi and Qigong, which I could really use, um, not only to become, to become literally more powerful, is super important. So I just wanted to put a big exclamation point on this, and I'm glad we finally are getting to this and not this nonsense <laughs> about fighting. Right, thank you, cool. Hi, Leticia. Valerie. Uh, Valerie. Hello, a question, whoops. A question for you. Would you, um, I mean, I don't know if it makes any difference learning the form, you know, having that muscle memory and then taking these steps. Um, although way back when, you know, I was, I was aware that it, it's a spiritual practice. It, that part was more important to me than uh, uh, the martial aspect. But I mean, is that more of a hindrance to learn the form and be in the muscle memory, you know, have that muscle memory and then take these other steps or starting from the beginning, you know, and approaching it that way and going hand in hand. Does it make any difference? Do, do you understand uh, that's, a, that, that's, a, that's a great question. That's a really good question. And uh, I will speak from my perspective and I have admittedly a minority uh, opinion on this, but I believe that I start people right right from the beginning with this. I believe that learning it with quote muscle memory close quote is actually a hindrance that it's stuff you have to unlearn later on because you get into a habit of doing it and whenever you are invoking your muscle memory, that's pre-conscious, by definition. It's something that, oh, I'm, this, my muscles are doing this and I don't have to get involved. And uh, I make a big distinction here between that and learning patterns that allow you to make informed choices. So whenever I do my tagging form, I have to say I never do it the same way twice even though from the from an exterior viewpoint it looks a lot a lot the same but each time i address it it's a brand new experience and every movement is done as a conscious movement and anytime i find myself kind of slipping out and and going into a a habit uh, i consider that to be oops that's a mistake i want to get the get the uh, trolley back on the tracks real quick 
and go back to actually feeling. And, and that's how I re-enter that conscious movement is through what is this, what am I feeling? And not answering that question with any words or any story, but it's like, oh, I'm feeling my arm is going out. No, it's you feel, you feel it and you don't put an, a, uh, put labels on it. You just do it and you feel it. So the, uh, the, the long way of, of saying, I consider it a hindrance to go the muscle memory route, to memorize a bunch of things and then go back and later try to figure out how to do it right. I'd rather start right from the beginning. And if you do the, the opening for six months, which actually I've done with my students, you know, just do the opening. <laughs> they let Maria's wincing here, but, uh, <laughs> but we did that. We just did the opening for six months or maybe actually it's closer to like six weeks. But anyway, it was a, it was a long time. And uh, we just, just did that. And this is people who had been doing the form for decades and it doesn't matter. They were, we're gonna go back and we're gonna, we're gonna do this until we got that opening off of automatic. And so you can actually engage in total present time. So the we're never when anytime we're in that muscle memory state, we are not in the present moment. So the way we get into present time, this is also Taiji as a, as a spiritual practice is is how do we access the radical present anytime we want? And what better way to do it while you're doing this, your forum for 10, 20 minutes. You're just, oh, just here I am. And I'm just gonna practice being in the radical present now where I am doing nothing else but what I'm doing. And anytime I find my mind wandering, I bring it back. How do I bring it back? I feel, I feel, I feel my feet. I feel my elbows. I feel my, my uh, you know, whatever. Okay, I'm any other questions? I'm going to take him through doing something with that. With that, with that in mind. Yeah. We're going to suggest we we do something with that in mind. So uh, let's uh, then we'll we'll go back to the book. Uh, but let's uh, let's just take that. So we're going to we're going to go through an exercise, and uh, with the emphasis on really, really feeling what you what you're doing. Okay. Okay, so step out and get your three pillars in. So feel the balls of your feet. The weight is spread throughout the foot, but you want to, you're pressing down on that button there at the ball. Knees are unlocked. Reach up with the crown of your head, tuck in the chin. So you're sinking into your feet and you're reaching up with the crown. So you have these two different directions. Release your claws, spiral down, boom, boom, just release and let that go. Allow yourself to sink even more. Relax your lower back and, and allow your tailbone to drop. Open the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull by reaching up with the knee wand, tucking in the chin. Allow your elbow, reach out a little bit with your elbows and feel slight roundedness in your arms. Point with your index fingers and feel that. Just give them a little wiggle there and feel the energetic coherence. And feel yourself move into a state of wholeness. Notice your mind is clear. Move to the gap between thoughts. We're learning to get acclimated to that state. To move to a knowing without thinking. So now we're going to do an exercise called uh, lifting the sky. And inhale, 
and bring your hands up. Rotate your forearms so your palms are facing upward and hold your breath for a moment. Reach with your elbows, sink. And then exhale and reach with the elbows, the wrists, the fingers, slowly exhale. Point as you go down. Point your index fingers and reach down with your fingers, reach to the floor and open the joints. But don't straighten the arms, get just feel the joints opening, your elbows are still reaching out a bit and feel that, that space in your joints. And exhale. Inhale. Rotate the forearms, press up, lifting the sky. Notice the elbows are reaching out, arms are rounded, sink down, bend your knees, sink down. So you're reaching up and sinking down at the same time. And exhale. Inhale, point and reach. Open the joints. Exhale. Inhale. Feel, feel your elbows, feel your wrists, feel your fingers, feel your knees, feel your feet. Exhale. Inhale. Reach, point, reach. Open the joints. And exhale. Take a moment and just relax into this neutral posture and just feel, feel the chi. This is where the interpreting energy part comes in. We're feeling something different. We've undergone a bit of a transformation. Feel the movement in your hands. In fact, we talk about feel the stillness in motion, feel the motion in stillness. In this stillness, feel the motion that's happening inside. Anytime we bring our attention inward, it's called in interoception. We're looking inside and feeling the changes that are occurring there, We're examining what's going on. Step in, deep breath. And exhale. Hear the energy. Allow yourself to dissolve into the emptiness. We've opened the energy gates and we're allowing the big T to move through so by clearing out used energy. We create a vacuum and allows the, the big T to move through. Earth T to rise up through the feet and the heaven T to come down through the crown.
Can you see? <laughs> I feel good, Rick. <laughs> Great. Good. Very simple exercise, but it moves moves up very quickly. The in direct proportion to how much feeling you you uh are aware of it at, 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 at that time. Any questions or thoughts? Anybody have? Uh, anything? Richard. 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 Okay. Um. So. Qigong is a practice of learning to sense the energy. Yes. What we're talking about is something uh, we're learning to sense the energy, but we're learning more than that, how to sense, how to get in touch with our sensory experience. Um, so I just want to, I, I just want to help myself distinguish between what we're doing now and Qigong. Um, yes. Well, actually, this is a way of, of getting the most out of your Qigong. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, I always, or, or for a long time, I've been thinking of Tai Chi as Qigong. Um, it can be, know. it can be, because Qigong is not just being able to uh, sense energy, but it's also to- Use it to- Yeah, to, to interpret it, but also to amplify it. So we're right. learning to, we're learning to create more flow through the system because we have a lot of uh, a lot of barriers, a lot of kinks in the hose, and so the three pillars help us to set the stage so that we can actually get more out of each each exercise. Well, I, um, to me, what we do has more depth to it than qigong. If that's not a really ridiculous thing to say. Because I think that what when we when I'm trying to be coherent, it seems to be a larger something larger than um, the scent the scent something larger than the understanding of energy, which I think yeah. of as qigong. So uh, the the coherence that comes from tuning into our sensory experiences is seems to add another dimension to understanding the energy. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it's another dimension or if it's a or if it's a sequential process. Um, I, I think it'd go with the latter. I think that's what we just talked about with the, with that section of the of the, uh, the the 40 chapters is that it is a sequential thing that you establish your, you reclaim your ability, not even reclaim, you actually, it's, it's, it's brand new. It's not something you've ever done. It's not, it, it, it's something that you're actually learning how to do, how to feel, how to sense in the fullest, you know, it, it, to the fullest you can. And that then allows you to open the door to more chi flow, which, so then it becomes popple. If you, you are chi deficient and everything's blocked up, then chi is going to be invisible to you. But if you open up and if you allow the big chi to move through, it's like it's hard to ignore it. Wouldn't wouldn't everybody anybody have any disagreement with that? I think it's it's pretty. Uh, <laughs> you feel it, right? And so that is a uh, so then oh, what you're saying is. There's something more going on here than just chi now. And that's exactly what you know they're talking about in that chapter. It's like, yes, when but that's when the spiritual illumination comes in. What you what you first said, I 
I immediately connected the first two phrases and I connected them to sensing the movement. Um, and that seems to be, that seems to be, that seems to be very interesting to me, not just seeing the movement, um, but fe feeling, sensing the movement um, in a different way than observing the movement. Yes, exactly right. Exactly right. And that's, uh, and that is why they say it's so difficult to do is because we are wired to be in that observational mode. Right. We are wired to, to look at things as objectively. We objectify everything and turn it into a story. And what they're saying is, this is, don't take, take this lightly here. This is a big deal, learning how to reclaim your sensuality. Okay, so right. that's, so, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. Okay, let me uh, read you another little piece here, because this is, uh, this is good. Um, talking about original endowment. So this is basically your potential, you know, what you have, each, uh, each of us has coming into this. So to uh, wishing to regain our original endowment, it is impossible to discover our movement potential without physical exercise or to find the source of consciousness without intellectual activity. And this is an important thing here. So we have two aspects, uh, insubstantial and the substantial aspect. The, the substantial one is physical exercise to actually feel this stuff. And then intellectual activity, this spirit of inquiry that allows us curiosity that makes us want to say, well, what about that? So we're actually requires an examination. And that's what we're doing right now is we're actually looking at it from, from the intellect. So it's kind of paradoxical in that in order to actually feel the chi, you have to suspend the intellect, but in order to understand it, to place it in a context, you have to re-engage the intellect. So, um, this then leads to movement with consciousness. With mobilization, there is sensation and with movement, awareness. Without mobilization, there is no sensation and without movement, there is no awareness. When mobilization reaches its peak, there is movement. And when say sensation reaches its peak, there is awareness. Okay, this, let's unpack that because that's, that's a- uh, Give me the book. Give you the book? So I can write the name. Oh, okay. Um, th this, is, this, this is a big deal here. So we need this intellect. We also need the, the, the sense. We have to be able to bring both to bear. But the, um, the idea of mobilization, this is a, uh, something that appears, and it might be Wiles' uh, translation of the Chinese term, I'm not sure, but uh, he uses it here, uh, not just here, but in other places. And mobilization means to get ready to do something. You mobilize, you know, the, the troops were mobilized. That means they get ready to ship out. So they were, so when you talk about getting mobilized, he says, it was, without that, it's, it's not happening. So there is no movement without the mobilization. And and this actually goes back to the muscle memory thing is that when you're doing it with, up, with muscle memory, you're not mobilizing. You're executing, but it's happening at a very, uh, at a physical level, but there is no mobilization happening. The mobilization he's talking about here is gathering this readiness potential, then executing. That there's a, a state of being first and then doing. We talked about this uh, a bit last week, but they, uh, we want to be able to get soon, so we're able to release down into the, the being state, get yin, and then from there we extend out. So if 
you bring your hand up like this, and I'm gonna ask you to reach forward, but don't reach yet. So I want you to feel your index finger pointing, but don't point it. And then feel yourself reaching forward toward me, but don't move. Feel what's going on inside your body mind as you do that. This is mobilization. We are gathering the energy and the intention to make something happen. And that is very different from the actual doing of it. So now you just reach out physically and just feel that. Yeah. So notice that there is there is a an insubstantial and a substantial to the to the movement. The readiness potential, that mobilization is the insubstantial. And the actual movement is the substantial. But did you notice a uh, energy whenever you're in, you're in the mobilization phase? Just uh, give me a gallery. So did you notice energy an energy flow as you're doing that? Yes, 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 yes. Some did. Everybody did. Good. Okay. Good. That's what we're what we're looking for. So let's uh let's just play with that for a moment. We'll do a uh, and we'll do a simple e trend exercise where we're using that principle. So this is to really put a spotlight on the mobilization phase. So step out with your left foot. Think. Gather. So feel yourself lifting up energy, space, air, whatever, but you're not moving. Feel the feel the gathering process there. You're and then come on. Bring it up. Bring your elbows out, reach out that, feel the weight over the, feel the, your, the balls of your feet, reach with your knee one, reach out with your elbows, reach with your fingers. And feel the intention to reach forward with your fingers, reach toward me with your fingers, but don't execute. Now feel your hands pulling back toward your body, but don't move. Feel your right hand reaching up and your left hand reaching down, but don't move. You know, your left hand reaching up, your right hand reaching down, but don't move. Feel your hands pushing together, but don't move. Feel your hands pulling apart. Don't move. Rotate your palms. Press down with your hands. Don't move. Press 
push down. Just feel the chi in your hands now. And feel the potentiality for all those movements that you, you didn't make. Feel them all simultaneously as potentialities in your hands, in your arms, in your body. Bring your awareness to your left hand. Feel it reaching, opening, but don't move. Notice the substantiality of the energy in your left hand. Now bring your attention to your right hand. You reach and open with the right hand and feel into that. Feel the substantiality of the energy in your right hand now. Notice that you are interpreting energy. It's not just one homogenous blob of energy. It's you are interpreting it. You are moving it around. You are directing it. You're generating it. Step in, deep breath, and disappear the chi. Have a seat. Sorry. Um, so I'm going to slaughter this. The other day in the workshop, you had said, uh, like I said, I'm gonna slaughter this. It's not so much. It's not just about the chi, but it's what you do with the chi. That's what this is, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, you're you're in you're yes. What you're doing with it does it. There's chi everywhere. Uh, so so what you know? <laughs> it uh, but being able to direct it is is that's that second step second stage of that of that process first get that awareness that body mind awareness and then interpreting energy and then it opens up to something more scott you got something oh uh, yeah first wow <laughs> wow <laughs> right? that, was, that was really impressive um that, <laughs> so um um, mobilizing, and then when you actually move, when I actually moved, it was like every atom in my body was moving it, you know, it wasn't, you know, I was moving my hand, but every, you know, it was, the, the motion was coming from everywhere, it was really. Wonderful, wonderful. I, that's, I that's, 
yeah, that's, that's, that's what we're looking, looking for. That's what we're looking yeah. for. <laughs> Sandy. Yeah, just to just to add to what Scott was saying there, I I I feel like my cells are leaning in the direction, but the, <laughs> hands on, but the cells are are leaning that way. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Val, you had something else you wanted to say? Yes. Then once you get the mobilization there, the actual movement is almost in. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, superfluous is a good word, but you know it's, like, it's effortless. So effortless, it's just it's effortless. So it's, effortless. It's, it's graceful, it's like you're you're ah, you're floating through the form, you know. But if you don't mobilize, it's like ah, ah, you know. It's a there is a uh, it's you're grinding, and who wants to do that? You know, <laughs> we you know if we have this at our this accessible, right? Why, why not do this a lot? You know, that's, uh, it seems to me like, because th then that opens up that third door there to spiritual illumination. It, is, yes. Is this really what you're feeling when you're filling? Yes. How does this relate to? But that, that, that's a term I, I think there, oh, okay. we, we, we open up here. We'll, we'll get to that at a, a later date. Um, so Richard. <laughs> Um, I actually Valerie said what I was going to say right before I was going to the the mobilization decreases the effort of the movement. Um, if you take a little more time to mobilize, the movement is mo much more effortless, right. uh, or at least that's what I was that's what I was sensing. I don't. I, I that is way I, way I feel too, and I think that's that's so well supported by the uh, by the literature, and certainly my my forty plus years of experience on this, it uh, is supported by that. It, uh, so the time we take now to inculcate that awareness and that process, where we actually patiently create a state of being prior to doing, then after a while, it becomes so easy to do that it takes virtually no time at all to execute. And that's so, where you know, they talk about in the classics where, where my opponent begins before I do, but I arrive before he does. It's because, you know, I'm in the state of being and I'm kind of waiting, waiting, waiting. You know, you think, think Yoda, you know, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, come on, you know, and then boom, done. And it's it's over. And it's a yeah, that is the you know, the martial application of it. It's um it's paradoxical, but it's we start to bend time and space in that state. And this is where the spiritual illumination comes in. We start to to Things start to get really funky, and uh, you, uh, be, you, you, weird stuff starts to happen, and that's uh, that's we, we, we signed up for the weird stuff, and uh, that's the uh, that's the game. Richard, but, yeah, so but, but I'm just thinking of I'm just thinking now that that coherence is a component of of mobilization. Yes. Yes. So, it's so prior I'm to, trying, to put, trying to put this all together here. <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, in fact, I would say the three pillars are the foundation for mobilization. Because if you don't have your three pillars in, yeah, if your hose is caked, you're you're not uh, you're not going to be doing it. If you're if you um, you don't have central equilibrium, you're not plugged into the big chi. So then you're just working with whatever pittance you have, you know, in, in, in your own system. If you're not coherent, you're not in a state of wholeness. So uh, you need you need those three pillars to establish your foundation. If you have those as part of your practice, but well, that's something where, yeah, you know, in class we, were, we would call it, uh, we just shorten it to boom. <laughs> that was get all three states in, 
get all three pillars in, boom, then you can proceed. Then was you could do something. But if you didn't have your boom in, then go back and do it. Because <laughs> every anything else you do after that is going to be ineffectual. Valerie, you had something. Um, I, I, you know, I'm speaking for myself and maybe other people, uh, maybe everybody else has already felt this, but the unkinking of the hose and for me specifically being now aware of the elbow gin has made the, what we're doing now very possible for me. Um, very possible in a very um, real way. I, I have to throw this in. You know, I, I look at what we've been doing in these classes and what I've been studying with you for the last, you know, 100 years. Um, <laughs> and it's it's like, you know, I start to think, um, gosh, I, I feel like I'm, I'm part of a Rick cult. Uh, you know, and, and, and well, quite not seriously. a cult, not a cult. No, 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 I'm, I want to clarify that. Um, because, I mean, I have belonged to other things that were very kind of cultish, even though, you know, you're, you're working with a teacher and you just glom on to what he says as being the gospel. And, uh, you know, in those other instances, yeah, I got a lot of stuff out of it. But I didn't get nearly even half of what I've been getting, especially lately, um, because I can feel it. That's the big difference. I mean, it's not just a bunch of words coming at me and like, well, if you do this and you do this and you do this and, you know, everything's going to come up roses. It's I have to experience it myself for it to go further. And um, uh, the elbow gin has really, really really impacted my practice I, I can't even tell you how immensely i think you know i'm sure I've, I, I still have kinks in my hose hose hoses all around no i know it's not a cult <laughs> i know it's not a cult i'm just just you know making that kind of comment if you see if you if you meet rick on the road kill him <laughs> <laughs> but that's what, what I'm trying to say is that's the difference is it's it's stuff that I can go out and practice by myself without having to have somebody else around me directing me that I'm experiencing it um and that's that's huge that's for me it's a, it's a big deal I'm sure it is for everybody else but it's just I had to say it it's a big deal to be able thank to thank you Mallory. I appreciate that <laughs> Leticia. Hey, Rick. Hey, everybody. Are you For... in Mexico? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Well, you look like you're hiding in a cave. Are you in a cave in Mexico? Exactly. Well, maybe you can see the moon <laughs> right there. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> the moon. Lovely. All right. So you're outside. Must be a I'm outside night by there. the ocean. Oh, well, <laughs> for me the experience was a little bit of a like i don't know if this is the word in english but like clinching you know when like click something in oh, nice. inside everywhere so it was just like it was feeling really cool but it suddenly started being like somewhere everywhere in both arms and then it goes more like into my i have a, a little injury for surfing in my thumb so it goes there and it was feeling like a circular of energy going like this and a little bit of pain. So it was fun. I was like, <laughs> I wish I could know how to heal my thumb by myself. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> but, but I think it, it, was, it was powerful because some like blockages in my body are in my arms. So I feel it start moving. Wonderful. Great. I'm so happy you, you, you made it. It's, it's so good to see you. I just cancel whatever it was, and I don't know if it's canceled or not, but I'm here. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Terrific. Good. Um, cool. So this kind of goes back to what you are saying before, uh, Richard, about, about doing Qigong. It's like, if you do Qigong without the three pillars, you're not going to get <laughs> what we're getting out of this. You, if you don't have the three pillars in, 
you're you're going to get you know a very small piece of it, and you know other people do it, put a different name on it, or even just do it, and they they don't know what they're doing, but they 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 get it in, but the uh, uh, immediately cranks it up to eleven whenever you put the three fillers in, and particularly that elbow gin, it's like oh, you know it just just wakens everything up. Cool. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions, thoughts? Stan, you're on Zoom. You're on mute, Stan. You're still on mute. Yeah. <laughs> Is that, did, did that work? Yeah. Good. There you go. Oh, okay. Uh, as always, I like to uh, sort of uh, put stuff that we do uh, like this and put it in terms of, of the form. Uh, basically, you're saying that this is what we should be doing before a, in between postures, uh, and, and as, uh, in between the movements. I'm saying more than that. Oh, no, you're saying more than that because uh, it seems like, uh, no, I won't go as far as what the statement you made in the book about uh, the expressions and what's in between. And you made it sound like the in between is as, as a, at least as important as the actual expression of, of the energy. So I, I think we're saying, I, I, think I, feel, I think it's a little bit more than that, but it seems like uh, the, uh, if the uh, space in between expression, if you don't do some of this, it's, it's like meaningless at, at that point. You, uh, you have to involve that, uh, that in between portion as much as the movements itself. Uh, you have to really explore it. At least that's the feeling I'm getting. I, I, I tell you, uh, maybe not as extreme as you express it, but it certainly is the is the case. You will get something even if you do Taiji or Qigong at a superficial level. You're still going to get a lot from it. Uh, mm -hmm. What we're talking about here is do we want that that spiritual illumination that they're talking about there? Do we want that ability to interpret energy? To do that, you have to have an abundance of qi flowing through you. Oh, yes. And, and that's the... Uh, so that is the, uh, what I've tried to do with all these exercises with particularly the three pillars is to say, this is how you get an abundance. You get more chi than, you know, than you can, you can possibly use moving through you. And then you get feedback from the activity. You, you do this and say, oh, well, I never felt like that before, you know, and it, it's, it's now. It's not like, oh, if I do this for another 20 years, I'm going to feel something. It's like, no, <laughs> we don't want to wait 20 years. No, we definitely. Do it now. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, what agree. was that book you're holding up there, Nora? I, I, I missed that. It's uh, If You Meet the Buddha on the Road, Kill Him. Oh, good. That was, I that just was started good. reading it, so it just I've been, been oh, okay. <laughs> That's serendipitous that uh, if you see Rick on the road, kill him. No. So, uh, <laughs> uh, that's great. So, uh, anybody else? Uh, it's been a wonderful, lively conversation. Thank you all for participating. And mm -hmm. could you hold that book up again? Could okay. you hold that book up again, Rick, that you were reading from? The uh, this one here? Yeah. Can you flash can you flash it to full screen? Yeah. Yeah, who's that by? This is uh this is the oh. it's called the uh, Lost Taiji Classics of the of the late Qing dynasty. I think you're probably seeing it. Are you seeing it reversed? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you have an author? It in the chat. it's it's in the chat. So it's uh, Douglas Weil, W I L E is the translator yeah. of this version. There's other versions. Yang Jing Bing does a nice version, um, and there are a few others that that are available. But I like this guy's uh, I like this guy's style and his uh, his uh, you know scholarship. He seems to know what he's doing. 
and uh, uh, it, it, it's really juicy. There's a lot of um, arcane stuff in there that you gotta, you have to kind of work through to find these nuggets. And uh, so I've been kind of highlighting the nuggets for you so that we don't get bogged down too much in the, uh, in the more esoteric stuff. But I believe it, you know, what we're talking about now, it really focuses in and, and corroborates the, uh, the path that we're, we've been working on. And more importantly, it's what you yourself are feeling. You know, it's, it's the, the feedback that you are getting, you know, it's nice to have it say, oh yeah, these old guys did it too. And this is what they, this is, you know, but they didn't want to share it with, with the common people, but this is what they, uh, what they, uh, what they were doing as well. And our language has to also fit in with our, our experience and, and our worldview too. So um, I'm trying to be a, a, a midwife to this and, uh, and bring this, this baby into, into the world in a, in a way that uh, will we'll recognize it. So, because uh, I don't know how many times I've read this book, but it, uh, each time it's like, you know, I get a lot more out of it. So uh, it's well worth, well worth reading, but don't be uh, daunted if you can't digest it all at once because it's, uh, it's a process that takes decades to, to work your way through because you peeling off the layers. Anyway, thank you all so much. Thank you, Thank you. That was fun. And, uh, great night, to see everybody. you all. See you soon. Don't forget to tip your waiter. Love you. <laughs> Thanks. Love you guys. Thank, Thank you. you Rick. Thanks, Rick. Good night, all.